How's it going everybody? I'm Cherokee Ronnie and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to run 35s on a low pinion Dana 30. <laughs> So we got the front end pulled out of the Jeep. Everything's just hanging here. The track bar, the shocks. We got the spring held up there. Basically everything's just hanging there. And I took everything off the front end I could. The axles, rotors, even the front diff. I took it off while it was under the Jeep and took the carrier out so it'd be lighter because I am doing this by myself. Drained all that stuff and then put it over here on the trailer where I can work on it. So it is pulled. It took me about two hours to do it by myself. So let's go over here and take a look at the diff. So here's the differential. It's nothing fancy. It's a typical low pinion data 30. Um, I'm going to go ahead and explain what we're going to be doing before we do it. First off, we got to cut and turn the C's. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and sleeve it. And then we're going to make brackets for, or like, you know, metal brackets for the lower control arms. This. And we bought a little truss to go right here. Um, we're going to make C gussets. Or we're going to put some here and then some on top of the C. That way it will strengthen that up. Um, the carrier, we don't have to do anything with because we already put a lunchbox locker in there, if you remember correctly. You can go back on the channel, check all that out. This is going to be a dirty and quick build. Gusset everything. And we're going to make our own you know, plates and stuff to gusset it with. And we're also going to be doing a cut and turn. We're going to be sleeving it, trussing it, cleaning it up, putting new seals and bushings in it, and be on our way. Now, the one thing that we're not upgrading is the axle shafts and uh, the knuckles right now. The reason why we're not doing anything with the axle shafts is because I don't care if it's a low pinion or a high pinion Dana 30. The ring gears are soft. So I want the axle shaft to bust before anything in here bust. Now we're going to go with WJ knuckles, but on down the line, I have those coming, but it's going to take a while. So we're just going to go ahead and build it. We can change the knuckles out anytime. It's simple. Everybody knows how they do that. Um, but basically we're going to be focusing on the front end itself and getting it beefed up to handle 35s. So a lot of people get on eBay and buy the plates for like 30 bucks and it's like $10 shipping. Um, I kind of looked at the picture, got a piece of cardboard, traced it out. And this is what I have. Just made a rough cut out of how it's gonna set in there. Cause we are gonna brace this bracket and run our truss over here and we're gonna brace the back also. And then we're getting a track bar mount that'll brace this up. So this will be solid. This won't bend by the time we're done. Um, so basically this is how I'm saving so much money on beefing everything up you just make a template same way it goes with the C's I have the C's that will go right here and the ones that go on the inside go to a metal yard go to their scrap pile that they throw out they sell this stuff by the pound get sheets like I got different thicknesses and uh, just trace it out cut it out so all the bracketry that you're going to see, I cut out. As you can see, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be good enough to get me to where I need to be. Same way when it comes to the C's. Might not be cut perfect, but uh, it'll get me where I need to be. Plus, I'm going to make a template to do the insides of it right here to strengthen it up. So one thing I did buy was the small truss that we're going to be using on this build so we're going to be trusting this side a little bit but we are sleeving this so i don't need a great big truss to draw attention to it 
and this is budget friendly also. Basically, you have this up in there. We have the truss, we'll have it sleeved. We'll have the mount over here against this. There's no way this thing's going anywhere. Plus we're gonna do the back side. So that's not gonna bend anymore. Um, but I thought I'd just show you what I'm gonna be doing, how I made this stuff myself, except this. Here's the tube, what we're gonna sleeve it with. Now, first thing we have to do is drill a hole here, hole here, here on the back side, here on the back side. And then the short tube that I have, I gotta drill a hole here and one on the back side. And this just slides through. But before we do this, sliding this through, I'm actually cutting these off and rotating them back. Um, so I can get better caster and a better pinion angle. Cause I can, I already did all the measurements I needed to do to have the perfect pinion angle. Now I gotta do the measurements to get my caster angle. I'm not going to record this because I'm not going to be responsible if somebody tries this and don't get the weld good enough and it breaks while they're on the trail or on the road because basically all I'm doing is cutting this off I'm going to be sliding this through so that it'll hold this C straight and then I'm going to weld around it and set it where I need to be it's called a cut and turn and it's basically what it is you cut it and turn it back to get better caster Sleeving it makes it stronger. Sleeving it also makes it easier to do a cut and turn. There is a video on YouTube, a guy does it and he shows you how to do it. It's super easy, just cut it, bevel it, put your sleeve in so it holds it. Get your measurement, do your caster. But I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes. We're gonna drill three on this side, two on this side, and then we're gonna do two over here. Uh, I gotta do this before I do the cut and turn. I know a lot of videos show you to clean out the tube first, and then you gotta drill you gotta clean out the tube again. So we're just gonna do it all in one shot, drill the holes out. After we clean the tubes out, we're gonna go ahead and cut the C's off, go ahead and sleeve it to where it's even, weld my C's back on, and then go ahead and finish pounding the sleeve in and welding it to the tube. We're gonna be plug welding it, and basically you're not gonna see these when I'm done, because I'm just gonna plug weld it and then grind it down flat. You won't even know the sleeve is in there. By doing this, it strengthens up this tube from bending. I'm gonna be running a little truss, not necessarily for the tube, but for this bracket. So people will focus on getting this as straight as possible, the holes. I'm not worried about it. You're not gonna be able to see this when I'm done. So we're gonna roll it over, put two back here between these two, and then we'll do the two over here. That's basically all you do. This is a lot thicker than I thought it was going to be. And we're also going to weld around here to make that stronger. But this wasn't too bad to uh, drill through, actually. It wasn't too bad. So we got these C's tilted back to where we need it. I went ahead and tacked on the gusset on the top. We're going to go ahead and pound the sleeve in. I left it stick out a little bit so I could put the C on here and center it up so it wasn't crooked, so it's straight as possible. And we beveled it and welded it. So we're going to go ahead and finish pounding in the sleeve. This pounded in. Here's the holes. And we got this C welded up and this sleeve already put in. So I know a lot of people are going to ask me why I had to put these sideways. Um, because you got to make sure it doesn't hit your spring. And it doesn't fit very well down in there. I could have trimmed it to make it fit better. But I like it like this. Kind of goes across. Plus, I'm going to be gusseting the inside of here. So there's going to be plenty of structure here. So basically, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you don't really need a step-by-step -step guide to what we're doing. Like I said, we already got the lunchbox locker in there. We're just gusseting everything. Um, I put a little tack welds on the sleeve so it holds. So if it gets knocked around when I'm not here. So we got all the brackets tack welded on. I started welding this a little bit. Make it a little bit stronger because I was rolling it over, tacking the gussets on. We got the lower control arms mounts plated. So we're going to go ahead and weld all this up. All these brackets. And then we'll start on the C gussets.
So I've been out here welding for, so I've been out here welding for about three or four hours. Um, this is very time consuming. I'm not going to record all of it because basically I'm just welding on brackets, uh, plates to make stuff stronger, stuff like that. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the greaser on the axle and then power wash it off and then weld our C gussets on and our track bar mount. Then we can paint this thing and then put everything back together and throw it back in the Jeep. So we got everything sprayed off. It was greasy, it was dirty. The only thing we got left to do is put the track bar bracket on, the C gussets, and continue welding around the tube. Um, had a little problem with my welder. It was giving me a fit right in here and right here for some reason, the last two places I welded. So I had to check into that. I finally got it working good and we got these welded on. But basically we're gonna go ahead and weld these on. You're not gonna miss much. They're just little C gussets. And then we're gonna weld our track bar mount on and be done. We can paint this thing and uh, make it look like a new axle, put our front diff cover on that we got for it. Actually went with an aluminum um, diff cover. We're gonna try it out, never tried an aluminum one before. Trying to keep this axle as light as possible because now we have it a lot heavier than it usually is. Cause you know, it's sleeved, it's got all these bracketry here. Uh, as you can see, I beefed up the lower control arm mounts. All right. After a long two days of doing nothing but welding, fixing a welder, welding, fixing a welder. I don't know what's up with my welder. It keeps messing up. But all that matters is we got everything welded on. Track bar, relocation over the axle. We've got the C gussets in here. Got the gussets up here. We got the gussets in the upper control arm mount. Got the truss on. All this is gusseted. I think I'm gonna run a piece of steel from here to here. Um, the lower control arms are plated and gusseted with 3 16 um, This thing is ready to rock and roll. I just got to paint this thing and uh, be done with it. So we got some paint on there. We got to do the inside of the seas, but I'm going to wait till it dries. Put the old diff cover on there because I ain't worried about that. We got a new one to put on there, but it's actually looking pretty good. It's really going to pop when we put the aftermarket diff cover on there. So the axle is finally done. The paint is drying. We're supposed to get some cold weather. So I'm trying to get this done. So all the welding is done. This is why this is, you know, kind of short, a short, shorter video because the weather was warm and now it's supposed to get cold. It may snow, it may pour the rain down. But we went ahead and got the C gussets on. We got the gussets on the top right here, as you can see. Um, we got the track bar relocation bracket done. The lower control arm mounts are plated with plate and it is uh, gusseted on the inside so it don't bend, but they're pretty solid now. As you can see, the seat gusset here and the gusset right here. Um, we got to change out the mounts, the rubber mounts, because we're going to poly. Um, we got the truss put on and here is the diff cover that we got. We're going to be changing the knuckles out uh, in the future with WJ knuckles on that conversion. But for right now, we're going to be running the stock XJ knuckles but this is basically the axle. This is the bushing that we went with. It's a poly bushing. It's a really nice bushing. It fits inside the sleeve. Um, here's the company I actually got it off of. It's going to be a little bit of a tight fit, but as long as it is flush, um, I can pound this just a little bit where this was bent, but as long as it is flush, 
um, you're good to go. And this is how you can run a Dana 30 with 35 inch tires. Um, we did cut the old track bar bracket off, as you can see the, the two holes that were there. And uh, it looks really, really good. I'm really impressed with it. One more coat of paint and this bad boy will be ready to throw under the Jeep. I bought these because I couldn't make them because there was bins you had to put in them. So I bought those from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. This was from eBay. This was from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. And this was from eBay. Everything that we did and it's back under the Jeep so here's the Jeep the project Jeep Cherokee uh, as you guys know we built this whole Jeep on a budget um, just to get you out here wheeling in the woods and this Jeep has 35 inch tires and we built the rear ends around the tires that we were going to be running so here is the axle everybody said I should have went with a high pinion Dana 30 but I just want to show you guys that you don't have to spend extra money to run a low pinion Dana 30. Um, this will hold up with 35s. Um, I'll just have to prove you guys wrong. This caused big commotion on the internet, but uh, here it is. It's finally built. We got everything back together and it looks really, really good. So as you can see, we went ahead and put a gusset on the C and up here. We put a truss on there. We plated the lower control arms. We got over the axle track bar. We gusseted the mounts here. And we did the same thing over there. We got a aluminum diff cover. We're running cab fab steering. And honestly, this is a eBay track bar that I actually cut and welded right here to fit the over the axle track bar. So this is the axle. We also sleeved this axle on both sides, the tubes. We got to get a new vent hose, um, but we got the C's we cut and turned those back to where I could get my caster right and run the right pinion angle so we're good on that so we got this build done um, I'm going to talk about the price now we got $265 just in the axle build so that's the trusses the plates the over the axle track bar mount that's not counting on the steering because I already had the steering this is we're just talking about the axle itself so we had 200 some dollars 260 some dollars in that build. Now, by adding the lunchbox locker, we had like 460 some dollars and some change, but that just depends what route you want to go. Just wanted to show you that you can build, you could do this with a Dana, high pinion Dana 2 for about 260 bucks without the locker. But that's how you build a low pinion Dana 30. And I hope this helped you guys because I wanted to, uh, I mean, when I did this, the eight and a quarter build and the low pinion people got real upset they got on farm forums and started looking up stuff and commenting on my videos um it's great to upgrade but i don't need an eight eight in the rear i'm not going to 37s honestly an eight and a quarter built like we did will hold 35s if you haven't seen that video go back on the channel check it out i'll leave it in the description below um the eight and a quarter build we did um the low pinion Dana 30 is going to hold up just fine. I wanted to prove to you guys that you could build this in your backyard and use what you had. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. I'm Cherokee Ronnie. Stay dirty, my friend.